Okay, Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 20. Um, we left off yesterday, Paul and Barnabas uh, were in, what's it, I, Iconium, talking to uh, Jews and Gentiles in the synagogue. Some believed, some didn't. And there were some people that were like, we don't like you, we want to kill you. They learned about it, and they left. They fled. Um, and they're continuing to find the good news. So that's where we left off. So here we are in verse 8. In Lystra sat a man who could not use his feet, lame from birth, who had never walked. Oh, I bet you I know what's going to happen. This man was listening to Paul as he was speaking. And when Paul stared intently at him and saw he had faith to be healed, he said with a loud voice, Stand up right on your feet. Huh. And the man leapt up and began walking. <laughs> so when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Ly Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. And they began to call Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes <laughs> because he was the chief speaker. The priest of the temple of Zeus, located just outside the city, brought bulls <laughs> and garlands to the city gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard about it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing these things? We too are men, with human natures just like you. We're proclaiming the good news to you, so that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heaven, the earth, sea, and everything that's in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to go their own ways. Yet he did not leave himself without a witness by doing good, by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying you with food and your hearts with joy. Even by saying these things, they scarcely persuaded the crowds not to offer sacrifices to them. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and after winning the crowds over, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, presuming him to be dead. But after the disciples had surrounded him, he got up and went back into the city. And on the next day, he left with Barnabas for Derb. Dang, okay, that was not what I was expecting. Yeah, it took a pretty harsh turn there at the end. <laughs> it's like they were worshiping, worshiping him, and then they still okay. Let's let's read that again. Okay. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, "Stand up on your feet." At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in Lyconian. Let's say you say that right, Lyconian. I think so, yeah. Lyconian language. The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles, Paul, uh, Barnabas and Paul, heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from those worthless things. And, the, and uh, to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. 
in the past he let all nations go their own way. Yet he not he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficult difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing them. I guess that's the... Hmm. When some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the... Oh, sorry. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derb. Thank you. Man. Took a turn at the end there that I didn't catch the first time. Even with the... Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing them. So I, mine, I thought until now that the crowd was on their side. Them. From, uh, mine said sacrifice to them. Oh, so does mine. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. My bad. I can't read. I'm illiterate. To them. Never mind. What a crazy day. Like, I don't know if all this happened in the same day. They show up in Lystra. They see a man lame from birth who's never walked. And then Paul, like, filled with the Holy Spirit, like you see it, Paul. You know, it says, when Paul stared intently at him and saw he had faith to be healed, he said with a loud voice, it was like the Holy Spirit's like, boom, stand up right on your feet, like really boldly, which could have been pretty offensive to a guy who's never walked in his life, (laughs) you know? But he, he said he saw that he had faith to be healed. He could see it in the guy's eyes. And he's like, let's do this. The Holy Spirit's like, let's do this. And he just, boom, he says it. And the man just leapt up. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everybody in the city like tries, was trying to worship them like gods. And then before they know it, they're getting st- stoned by, by the Jews. And the and the from Antioch and Iconium where they previously were, like man, what a day. Um, the one thing that kind of struck me about this is like looking back on this. Can you imagine, like Paul and Barnabas later in their years looking back in this moment, like laughing about this day, like, what in the heck? <laughs> what a ride, you know? I don't know. What uh, what struck you guys about this? For some reason, I was reminded of a story Mike likes to tell of about 30 years ago at his job. He was in a high voltage lab and there was this technician that was just accident prone. And they had a big high voltage cage, big Faraday cage that they'd had test equipment in and they'd have to like adjust potentiometers. So shut the whole thing down, open up the cage, go inside, lock everything out, do the adjustment, come out, close it, turn everything back. Well, one day my dad walks in and sees that this guy has taped the pot tweaker to the end of a giant stick and is like feeding it through the chicken wire Faraday cage and tweaking things while everything is live. And this thing is not safe at all. And he's just like, stop, stop, stop. And runs over and slaps the stick out of the guy's hand. And <laughs> Oh, you froze. We lost it. him. That was a cool story, but I have no idea how it relates to this passage. <laughs> it's just, I know, I know. That's why I'm. Oh, that's hilarious. It, but it's just. Uh, Daniel, you froze. Yeah, I know. you froze. I freeze. Uh, when your dad slapped the stick out of his hand, right? Yeah, right. yeah. He just slaps the stick out of his hand. He just saved his life, and keep kept the guy from electrocuting himself on hundreds of thousands of volts. 
So why did that why did that come up in your mind? It's like suddenly Paul and Barnabas that all these people are playing with fire and they're just risking way too much on worshiping them. Like, ah, stop, stop. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> just the panic of, oh my God, no. <laughs> and they've rent their clothes. Like, <laughs> I think that's crazy. Like the tearing of the clothes. Yeah. What is that's an interesting that kind of strange to me. Yeah. Well, I think like it, in Jewish Jewish culture, that was something that they did. If, if they saw something that was like ter- like terribly blasphemous or, you know, <laughs> just like something right. so against the heart of God, they would just tear their clothes. Or their clothes and rush to the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That was, that was I guess why that's... I was, that's why that story reminded, was r- reminded okay. in my head. Because it's like, yeah, it's just the panic. The sense of panic that they had. Man, well, that really okay. that really happened with the with the dude in the stick. Yeah, that's that's really dumb. <laughs> Darwin Awards, hey, why Darwin yeah, Awards really. exist? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh man, but this is like the spiritual Darwin Award of. Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> the spiritual Darwin Award. I love that. <laughs> They're like, no. it's, it's, it's Hermes. No, 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 no. Stop. It's the slow motion. No, no. Exactly. You know that. <laughs> Before God, like a huge lightning bolt comes out, just right. pink mists everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Well, <clears throat> rewinding to two chapters earlier, think about Herod and how everybody was like, you must be the voice of God. And he's like, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then immediately he dies. So I could, I could, I could sense, I could uh... imagine Paul and Barnabas's fear is like, oh, dang. Remember what happened to Herod? No, we're not God. Totally. Of any language. Of any religion. <laughs> so was Paul present when that whole thing went down, or did they just hear about it secondhand? Or Saul? I don't remember. Yeah. It could they could have been. I remember the, the situation was that Herod was having an issue with these townspeople. They were hungry, they needed food, and he was like, I will bestow upon you in my greatness, you know, food and, and you know, give you life, I think is kind of the whole thing. And they're like, oh, they worship him. And and that's when God's like, oh, worms in the testicles, you're, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And Paul's <laughs> like, no, we're not going there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, it reminds me how well one of the common one of the common things that I have to remind myself is to take these stories as as much as I can in the context of the time in which they were written which is kind of it's kind of hard you can't really do that without being really without having a lot of base knowledge on what's going on but every once in a while you get you get little tidbits and clues and i think that's that's one of them to me they were you know now we can't even it's hard to imagine a guy a leader of any kind standing in front of a crowd saying i I will do this because i am awesome and from my greatness, I will feed. Like we would all, yeah. we would all say, "Wow, is this guy like in a Shakespeare play?" It was like <laughs> it kind of offends our modern sense of it. We we would think he's crazy, but back in the day, it was like um, pe- people really did worship. You know, the the uh, this this is essentially the Roman Empire. Caesar's worshipped as God. Men are worshipped as God. 
And that, that to me is just another, it's another reason why this story is so, it's such a paradigm shift to a lot of people who would, it was really offensive to worship anybody, but Caesar is, or Zeus or like, you know, these, these uh, Greek figures, I guess, but You know, it's interesting about that. I don't know how to, if that hopefully that makes that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, it, when you when you talk about that, in my mind, it's like I can see. It feels like it's like the worship of political leaders, government. It seems like a pretty a substantial temptation for humans, right? void of god if god if god isn't real then who will save us like who will who will protect us what is our what is our salvation from external threats internal threats ourselves like you know everything that's going on well the government they're the most powerful force so it's kind of natural it seems like to yeah to want to i mean we use the term worship but like putting our hope and our faith right in something other than mm-hmm. god i think it's i think it's common these days you know putting our hope and faith in political leaders and presidents and to save us i i just like this is kind of an extreme like the story with herod or with caesar they're kind of more extreme versions of that but it kind of feels like it's the same path you know what i mean mm-hmm. um yeah absolutely and it's like it's the same human impulse it's just it's manifesting today in a different way Mm -hmm. and we, but it's still the same thing. People worship. People can either worship God. Like this is how I see it. (laughs) People can either worship God or you can worship um, the, the works of man. And that, that includes politics, technology. Oh yeah. What have have you essentially like, the, the the base problem with that is when I think back to the garden, the snake says, "Ye shall be as gods." Even though you're not consciously making yourself a god, you are by putting your putting your faith in things like. Uh, there there are guys that are obsessed with downloading their consciousness <laughs> into computers. Yeah, I know a guy like this. He's he's so terrified of death. That and and is that any different from? You know, like the the ancient pagans that had to them modern like potions and spells, and mm. it, to me, it's exactly the same impulse that you know. Today we look back, we look down on those people, like oh, those those rubes, they didn't know anything, they were were so much more advanced. Than, we're we're exactly the same as <laughs> as they are. Yeah, and that's wow. that's something I just had that realization listening to. I was to a podcast about aliens. This guy, um, Jeff Durbin, is a, kind of a YouTube popular pastor. And he, he's entertaining. He goes around and argues with Mormons. And um, he argues um, pro, pro-life sentiments in front of abortion clinics. And But he, he sat down with two other guys, I think two other pastors, and they were talking about aliens and all kinds of crazy stuff. This was two weeks ago. And uh, when Congress was having their alien meeting. And they, they made a lot, they drew a lot of parallels to new age summoning of spirits, Ouija boards, talking to dead, all uh, tarot cards, all this new age stuff. And they, they made a lot of connections with the, with what people were doing with this alien thing. There's um, this famous documentary on Netflix. Uh, the creator of it has an app where you can actually summon UFOs. You can perform something like a seance and wow. It, 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 he, he made a pretty convincing case of drawing and it wasn't just aliens. It was other stuff too, but what really, what it, what it all came down to, to, to bring a full circle was a, a, it's, it's, it's a worship of some abstract spirituality instead of a true God. I think everything is kind of counterfeit God, Mm. except for God. There's, there's God. And then there's everything else. And 
Jesus said, the path to me is narrow. And I think it's true. You know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can put your attention in that are ultimately destructive and, and wicked. And it's really hard to tell. (laughs) I agree. But, but yeah, you're, you're right about worshiping man and, and politics and government. That's anyway. And rant. I, I, I totally agree. Like the, 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 the bombardment it's bombardment um, that we have in our culture is, is persistent. Um, ever present. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And it's so pervasive that it requires a response from us as people who believe in the one true God that seems to our culture extreme, and that is remaining in Jesus Christ any way that we can. Um, And for me, this is why I meet and read the word with you guys every day. Because I feel Mm -hmm. like if I don't do this, um, the wheels are going to come off the bus because there's just so much bombardment um, that I have to stay. This is the only way I can stay connected to the Lord. It's such a huge part of me remaining, you know, remaining in Jesus. (laughs) Um, Just feel like it's so important. I feel like it's so needed by the church we need it but um you guys want to jump into a quiet time with the lord Are you okay with that yeah do it um daniel would you mind leading us into that moment with some prayer yeah i can do that god keep us humble keep our eyes fixed on you We are nothing without you. And thank you for redeeming us as you want to redeem the rest of the world. Thank you for choosing us to be your hands and feet. But don't let us lose sight of the reason why. I pray you talk to us, speak to us. us. Do keep us humble when we find ourselves drifting. I feel that's your voice. May this in your name.
All right, gentlemen. Ready to come back? Yeah. What was coming to you during that time? Um, I, have, I started to be reading some of this more out of context bit of what they were actually preaching to the people as they were trying to prevent them from worshiping them. <laughs> we too are men like you. We are bringing good news. Turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. Past he let all nations go their own way. Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven, crops and seasons, and he provides you with plenty of food, fills your hearts with joy. Yeah, I, I just looked up the cross references to those things. It's like Psalm 8, 12. He, so I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. And then Micah 4, 5. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. And it was just, yeah. That struck me that all this time, yeah, Abraham came along and God said, I choose you, Abraham. The rest of the world still exists, but I'm focusing all my spiritual attention on you and your descendants. But then it's at this point that Paul is like, of Gentiles. He has not forgotten about you, and he still provides for you. And he still is a good God to you. In spite of you not being part of his covenant up until now. Cool. That's the Jewish perspective on, on what God's done. Mm -hmm. For the Gentiles. Awesome. How about you, Dylan? Uh, again, a little bit out of context, maybe, but so I was expanding a little bit on the idea that I was talking about <laughs> earlier. The uh, the context of these stories in which they were written versus our culture and um, the way that we think about, I mean, we, we think about things in a completely different way, but at the same time there, hmm. the, the substructure is exactly the same. Yeah. It just looks different. Now we have cars, we have planes and we have this technology. And, and I, th and I think it's a mistake to look back and, and say, and, and think, that these people were unsophisticated mm. rubes with nothing to offer. I think that's a real mistake <laughs> because the way I see it, we're doing exactly, we're making all the exact same mistakes. It just looks a little bit different, but it's, it's essentially exactly the same. Um, his, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes is a, <laughs> is what, <clears throat> um, Where's it going with that? It's it, a really cool term. When you, yeah, yeah, I, I forget where I heard that. It's it's pretty popular, but I was thinking about in with today's sensibilities, we we look back and we would, like I said, we would see someone preaching as if they were a god, and we would think, oh, that's a crazy person. And may, maybe in some aspects we're right, but in um. Well, let me put it this way, actually, with 
the the default secular opinion of of religion now is oh this was a invention it was a phenomenon a couple millennia ago in the middle east and a lot of ideas were colliding at once and you know it was just a, a folklore sort of mystic it was it's all fairy tale and and we we do that in the same way that the people that worshiped caesar look down on everybody else if that makes sense like hmm. the, the people the people that say that they 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 do have a god they they do uh, humanity is is uh is a fundamentally a religious creature whether we want to properly direct that impulse or not yeah and because all of those all of those same people there you're much more likely to be a postmodern um neo-marxist sort of thinker that places way too much in undue um faith and like ultimately faith the thing they look down on they 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 misplace that in bureaucracy and governments and science the science if everything was ruled by experts then we could usher in a utopia on earth and it just completely ignores the realities of human nature if that makes sense so does i when i when i think of that i i think of this the exact same people that worship caesar they're, <laughs> they're the exact same people it just looks a little bit the mechanisms are just different now today but it's the same thing um and then i and then i think well i thought let's think back to sodom and gomorrah like christ says we are we are the light of the world um, we need to go out and, and spread the good news for the light of the world. And I think what that means is look, you, we can look back through history and, and realize that Judeo-Christian ethics built the West. Um, everything that undergirds our political philosophy, democracy, checks on power, our legal system, right, to do due process jury of like it all has its basis in judeo-christian ethics whether people want to realize that or not most people don't today they just think oh it's reason it's not reason <laughs> it's it's truth yeah and and the majority of majority of these systems and science itself back going back to the enlightenment were the were the fruits of very devoutly religious people mm. and we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater in my in my opinion with a lot of this stuff, but you think how, how many, because I, the people that throw the baby out of the bathwater, they're like, Oh, well, yeah, all these things, it's just, it just makes sense. Democracy just, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you have, that's not our, that's not where human beings land. It takes yeah. a long time of trial and error to get here. And um, who was it? Isaac Newton. Maybe it was somebody else. I, I can only see what I see because I stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> uh, whatever that quote was. Uh, most people today don't don't see the giant that they're standing on. They they make giants of themselves. Again, the serpent in the in the garden. Ye shall be as gods. It's the most dangerous impulse that we have. Um, but anyway, that's a long winded way to say. How, how many lights, like how many self-disciplined moral people, people in, in my mind, people that tr properly understand this thing, the, uh, uh, Christ and God, um, how many of those people does it take to, because God, God would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah for 10 people, right? Mm. In a whole city. So I'm thinking, well, if, How many self-disciplined people does it take to to keep the ship on the right course in society, if that makes sense? Because if if everybody if everybody completely loses their sense of metaphysical truth th that we get through religion, 
throw the baby out with the bathwater, eventually it's going to collapse on itself. And I think right now we're just, we're kind of coasting, like we're the, the, the jets out of fuel and we're just kind of, we're just kind of coasting on the fruits of the generations before us. The momentum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's an interesting thought. I wrote down, how many God lovers does it take to keep this country on course? Um, <clears throat> well, in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, it took one. Yeah. <laughs> Just one. And then, and then God was like, yeah, well, I'm going to rescue that one. And I'm going to get him out of there. And he did. And he really didn't keep the country on course. He more just existed in it and kept the country from going to God's wrath. So. Say that again. He kept the country from falling to God's wrath. Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. Yeah. His presence in the city kept God from burning the city down. Oh. And oh, God was God. like, yeah, exactly. Okay. While he was still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, and this was. Didn't, didn't tell, didn't God tell Lot to leave? He's like, you yes. need to go now. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. he did. But before God had gotten into a sort of like negotiation with abraham and abraham's like if there's a hundred men in the city will you abstain from destroying the city yeah 50 yeah how about 10 sure okay 10 how about five uh yeah if there's five righteous men in the city i'll i won't destroy it how about just one uh yeah if there's one guy in the city i will abstain from destroying it yeah i've got a guy in the city is he's my cousin oh okay and so God walks in, and rescues him, pulls him out in his family, and then destroys the city because he's no longer in it. <laughs> I heard someone the other day called modern music, Sodom and Gomorrah music. <laughs> uh, we have, it's just talking, talk about modern culture and the, the licentious, um, depraved there's there's no there's no class in modern culture anymore mm -hmm. and this guy calls it uh you know like i don't know if i should say this on a uh, wap that song <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but whenever two years ago it's like biggest song ever and then you contrast that with uh there's some dude in Richmond, north of Richmond. This this super popular song that made uh, this guy became an overnight sensation with this like folk song, I guess you'd call it like folk. Yeah. But just the dude and his guitar, notes of Richmond, and it's like that. I, it's it's a good song, but it's it's interesting that what the the. Uh, Hollywood culture machine throws at you what I just said the Cardi B song or whatever it was versus a grassroots song they're like completely opposed like this this guy's in in concerts he reads he reads biblical verses he reads psalms and then you contrast that with um the popular music today it is like Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> it's, it was this guy's point I was like wow you're right we're you know can you post a link to that in our sure in our first fruits chat on remain community? Like this yeah, thing? I gotta. Yeah, I gotta find it. I actually haven't, I haven't found the chat yet. I gotta, I gotta go find it. Is it on uh, that website? What's it called? Yeah, remain uh, community. Yeah, okay. Remain community, and then when you go in, um, you should have, you should see on the left hand side under under gatherings. You should see a gathering called First Fruits, and mm -hmm. then you can click on that. And then when you click on that, then you should see the chat. 
if you don't see that first fruits gathering in the remain community, let us know because we'll need to we need to make sure we add you if, if you haven't okay. added. So um, also the event links like the Zoom links are there for the daily Zoom and everything mm -hmm. else. Um, okay. So so one thing I that I was hearing, I know we we've, we've gone over. Are you guys okay to kind of keep going just a little bit longer? Yeah. Daniel, are you good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, no, I just wanted to share what God was talking to me. What stood out to me was the how in Paul and Barnabas's heart, God was speaking through them to these Gentiles, right? People were not Jewish. They were Gentiles and they were you know, cultists, I guess, you know, and people of the world. And um, it was like, well, how does God speak to them? How does God want us to speak to them? And it was, they were, they were telling them of the Lord's kindness and his love for them. They were proclaiming God's love to them and trying to show them, look at what God has provided to you. He fills your hearts with joy. He fills your stomach you know, with food, he, he is the great provider. He loves you so much. He does all these things because of his great kindness. And, um, and it was like, and God was telling me, do the same thing. Show them who I am, my kindness and my goodness to them. Um, and then it was, you know, the, that they may not believe right away like just like here like it, they didn't right away believe but it was like how will they know if you don't tell them and God's been like saying things to me or other people like in a moment he'll speak something to me and I'll kind of had this like oh should I say that to them and I'm like, I don't know if I should or not. I don't know if it's me coming up with it or if it's God. But I've kind of gone out a little, on a limb recently, more so. And I've just spoken that thing to that person. And in the moment, it doesn't look like anything. It's like, okay. And then I come away from that. Like, they're like, oh, interesting. Cool. Thanks. And then... After and then afterwards, I'm like, oh man, that was so stupid. I shouldn't have said that. It was just me, and they're probably like offended or weirded out by it or whatever. <laughs> this has happened three times this week. <laughs> the same exact thing, um, with three different people. And then, like the next day or you know, hours later, so they'll contact me and they'll be like, oh man. You know, you know, you won't believe how blessed, blessed, you know, how blessed I am when you said that. It's just like that was really, you know, they really felt like God was speaking to them. Really? Here it wants Georgia, quit it. Quit it. Get up here. <laughs> My goodness. No, stop it. Anyway. Sorry. No. So that happened. And, uh, and, oh my gosh, I see what it is. No. It's a huge balloon flying right through the open space. And it's really low. It's fine. It's just a balloon. It doesn't bite. Anyway. Okay. So, but God's been saying like, just, it's like, just keep doing it. And whoever it is, whether it's a believer or someone who's not a believer, just keep speaking my words to them in faith. And he's like, I'll bless it. So that's what, that's my takeaway for today. Excuse me. There you have it, gents. That's good. All right. Well, you guys want to wrap up and we'll pray. Dylan, will you pray us out sure. today? 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. God, once again, we appreciate this opportunity to gather with these this group of committed men and really take the time to give you our first fruits, and soak in your word. We pray that, like Paul and Barnabas, that you give us the courage to go into potentially potentially unsafe, rough, uncomfortable situations and maintain that steadfast commitment to you. And I, I hope and pray that you speak through us and you, you bless everybody that we come in contact with today and we'll do it all over again tomorrow. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, sure. Love you. Thank you. See you later. Love you. All right. See you guys. Bye. See you.